Welcome everyone to theCUBE's continuing coverage of SuperCloud 5, the battle for AI supremacy. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. I'd like to welcome two guests to the, to the CUBE right now. Harry Alt, he is the EVP of Corporate Development and Partnerships at Datastax, and Mona Chada, she is the Director of Technology Infrastructure Partnerships at AWS. Welcome, Harry and Mona. Thank you. Great to be here. Huge fan of the Cube. Thank you, Rebecca. Excellent. <laughs> well, we're talking about all things Gen AI. Harry, I want to start with you. Um, tell our viewers a little bit about DataStax. It's a database management solution company. Tell our viewers a little bit more about what you do there and how DataStax is currently focusing its efforts. Perfect. I'd uh, love to do it. So, DataStax was founded. Uh, a little over a decade ago uh, to be an enterprise distribution of an open source technology called Apache Cassandra. Uh, and roughly, you know, seven, eight years ago during the mobile app uh, boom, um, enterprises were looking for an always on distributed uh, operational data store to power the applications that was going to drive their business and their customer experience. And so many of them selected this open source technology. So um, if you, you know, most of the apps we all use on our phones, if you used Uber to get to work or to uh, run an errand, if you used Apple today, whether it's Apple Pay or iCloud, um, JP Morgan Banking, Verizon, Capital One, all of these companies uh, use uh, um, Apache Cassandra as the operational data store to power these applications. And, and the really interesting element of, of, about um, bringing our partnership together and taking it to the next level with AWS is that all of these customers, the overwhelming majority are running AI in production today. Um, it's just not generative AI, it's predictive AI. Um, it's taking you know, unique machine learning models, deploying those in forms of recommendation engines, feature stores that provide really advanced personalization that you know make us love the Marriott Bonvoy app experience or the Delta Airlines app experience, um, and 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 sort of enable that uh, um, that application to be always on and serve serve the customer. So our partnership is evolving now to this next level of generative AI. Uh, and we've been on this journey as DataStacks for the last four years. We've done four acquisitions. We've been very focused on you know, developer-centric experience with our cloud product on AWS. And uh, um, we have a purpose-built platform that's already running predictive AI that will talk more about how we with AWS are now bringing generative AI with radical simplicity for the developers and operators of those systems. Yes, exactly. I want to I want to dig more into this new integration. But Mona, I want to talk to you about Gen AI, which has been the buzzword of 2023, and that shows no sign of slowing down next year and the years to come. <laughs> I'd love you to share some insight about how AWS is approaching the Gen AI wave. Yeah, and you know, really, our you know, our well, just to sort of echo some of Harry's points there is that, look. AI has been around for decades and Amazon has been doing AI and has incorporated AI into at their applications for decades, right? And it manifests in like Amazon Go, you can see it in Alexa, even on the Amazon website, just really, you know, being able to um, create just better experiences for our end customers. And we've always sort of incorporated that. And now, you know, as Harry also mentions, like generative AI kind of takes it to the next level. And that also manifests in a lot of the partnerships that that we have, including the one that we have with DataStax with the new kind of SCA that we've also put in place. It's just adding that extra layer to it. But really our strategy, the AWS sort of strategy for generative, generative AI has really been rooted in ensuring that we innovate rapidly you know, to deliver just comprehensive set of um, services and programs that you know, really help customers accelerate their innovation with generative AI um, and doing it in a cost-effective and secure way, right? And I think that that's really important. Um, and so the way that we look at generative AI is almost in like three mega layers. The first one being that you have to run your, you know, whether it's these large language models or any other foundational models, um, you know, with the right power, with the right compute, right? And in a cost-effective way. And so that's why AWS developed AWS Tran uh, Tranium, um, which really is like powered, um, you know, Amazon EC2 instances that really bring that efficiency to allow, um, you know, people to run their, um, their large language models and, you know, 
you know, and train them in, in a most cost-effective way. The other set of uh, chipsets that we have are AWS Inferentia, and that really uh, leverages sort of that custom design where you can um, leverage your learning models, run them on Inferentia, uh, Inferentia. And, you know, what we found is that a lot of um, other providers of large language models, like Anthropic, for example, are actually incorporating AWS Inferentia and Trainium into their large language uh, models uh, build. So it's just a very easy way to like now build, train, and deploy um, you know, their, you know, your future LLM model. So that's sort of the first layer is all around, you know, compute and having that power available to run these foundational models. The middle layer is really, um, you can kind of think about it as like, you know, almost like LLMs or foundational models as a service, right? And then being able to embed those into your gener generative AI applications. So that's Amazon Bedrock. And that is something where, you know, um, Datastax and, and us um, as part of our, uh, our SEA agreement, that's where Datastax has integrated with Amazon Bedrock. And that's a fully managed AI service that really, you know, it includes, you know, not, uh, it includes our um, large language models like Titan, but also third party um, uh, models such as Anthropic Cloud, um, Stability AI, AI21, um, Labs, and Cohere. And there's others that are integrating to it. And so, you know, that sort of middle layer is kind of important to then you know, build upon uh, and run those uh, large la uh, language models and embed those into applications via APIs in a very simple way. And then the last layer is really about development tools and, um, you know, having applications that run these large language models or any sort of foundational models. And that's sort of manifested in Amazon Code, Code Whisperer, which is really your code companion, right? And it's a key development tool uh, to really accelerate, you know, code creation for any, you know, generative AI application. Um, and it's trained on billions of lines of code so that, you know, you can generate uh, code suggestions, um, you know, that range from snippets to then, you know, any sort of fully functional, uh, you know, lines of code in real time. So those are sort of the, you know, I would say operational aspects of it. But then when you look at it, um, when you look at this, so that's on the services side, but then you got to think about the program side of it. And one of the key things that I don't think we talk about enough is that you got to give people the skill sets. You got to have the programs in place, right? That, you know, allow, um, you know, allow like developers, as Harry mentioned, you know, take over and be able to leverage and use these, um, these applications, large language models, be able to build it, right? And so that's why what we've done is we've built a generative AI innovation center. And what that does is it really allows um, experts in AI that we have that are technical experts that really help you develop your application, really help you think about how you want to, you know, develop a business around it, um, think about what the business value is, um, and then just really help to figure out how do you want to leverage some of the applications, uh, some of the tools that we have, the services, any third party that includes third party applications like data stacks, um, like AstroDB into your gen generative AI applications. Um, and then we also have things that we, you know, announced recently, uh, Amazon corporate wide around AI ready. So again, you know, training 2 million people by 2025 so that they have the skill sets that they need in order to not just build, but also just have the knowledge of what it takes to, you know, to create and to innovate with generative AI. Um, and then we also have an AWS generative AI scholarship that we're um, providing to, um, to to high school students, right? Um, and you know, to fifty thousand uh, high school students is really our target. And you know, you got to start young, right? We got to start with the knowledge and the education, and as you know, as quickly as possible. So you know, we just don't want generative AI to be in the hands of a few, but for many, so that you know, everyone can ultimate ultimately benefit in this sort of transformative uh, technology that's. That's you know kind of been here for a while, but it's now gone to the next level. Right, people in the industry, as you said, have been working on on this and yeah. this for decades, but it's really sort of captured the public imagination this year with the launch of ChatGPT. Um, Harry, as you've said, DataStax and AWS have worked together for a long time, but this year, I, th I think you said we sort of took our relationship to the next level with this integration with Amazon Bedrock. Can you talk a little bit more about what you see as the primary benefits of this integration? Yeah, I, I, I think just to, to riff a little bit off of what Mona said, um, you know, if, if you listen to what she commented on, it, it's all around developer empowerment and developer simplicity. 
of bringing gen AI apps to the companies to that they work for to change the trajectory of those companies and to do it at you know low cost of failure, to do it with velocity, to do it with simplicity. And so, you know, before I get into the agreement, you know, what we what we are seeing is is that we are seeing a fundamental shift of our partnership that is less um, enterprise migration oriented and much more new app generation oriented, um, catering to uh, that developer community. And so that means a lot of heavy lift behind the scenes that our engineering teams have worked on around, you know, radically simplifying adoption through APIs. Um, most developers are not going to want to work with CQL shell to do their new um, generative AI app. So having APIs that are in the language that they prefer, having rich uh, sample frameworks uh, and application starter kits as a part of the experience. Um, you know, developers want to work in a product-led, um, you know, cloud-native type approach. And so with AWS, we're providing that with AstroDB on AWS. And the integration of the SCA level with Bedrock and SageMaker, you know, again, simplifies that capability, not just but from a, a, a bedrock, you know, Python notebook, quick pip install via SageMaker, but actually the larger ecosystem, you know, Mona referenced other alternative uh, foundation models and LLMs. Um, you know, we work actively with Langchain as an example to simplify that, you know, uh, onboarding of the, the system in a, a retrieval augmented generation uh, application deployment. So um, our, our, our partnership being taken to the next level is a couple fold. One, it's becoming developer focused. Two, it's becoming more and more product led uh, in terms of uh, developers don't wanna talk to salespeople necessarily. They just wanna go, they wanna have a cloud native experience. And so we're doing that um, uh, in, in, in our product uh, integrations. And then I think lastly, um, we, we as, as in our partnership in the past, we have not had a large uh, developer go-to-market focus. And I'll just give you one example. Um, you know, myself and several of our, our technical leads will be in India and Bangalore in two weeks' time. Um, AWS is hosting a Gen AI conclave. There'll be roughly 1,400 folks there. Very developer-focused event. We're doing dev days uh, before that event with a lot of our customers that are in production with generative AI already. Um, to help foster, you know, that uh, that community of of bringing people on board and showing them the power of this technology and how easy it is to adopt with our partnership. I think that community is such an important element of this. I'd like to talk to you, Mona. You you mentioned the strategic collaboration agreement, the SCA, yeah. which seems incredibly relevant and pertinent to the times we're living in right now, in particular the the objectives that you said in terms of how AWS intends to work with its partners. Can you talk a little bit about how you collaborate with your partners in, in terms of AI advancement? And I'm talking here about your partners in consumer packaged goods companies, utilities, um, governments. How do you work together to make sure you are all speaking the same language? Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, it's a good question. And I think that also this uh, agreement that we have, uh, we've been doing strategic collaboration agreements with multiple partners. and. I, and I think um, you know part of that is to really uh, create transformative uh, solutions for our end customers. And you know I think at Amazon, you know you've heard this a lot of times, and you know we'll continue to say this is that we always work backwards from our customers. And you know as we also and, and Harry can attest to this, right? Like as whenever we are developing any sort of um, integration that we have, whether you know it was with you know AstroDB and um, and Amazon Bedrock. We're always looking at, well, ultimately, what's the best experience for our end customers? And so that's what we anchor all of our sort of strategic collaboration agreements on, as well as just our regular sort of go-to-market initiatives on. And really what we're trying to do is we're working with um, partners that want to create those sort of transformative experiences for end customers and really help to transform their end applications and integrate generative AI solutions into that whether you know it's our services or um, other third party LLMs or other you know solutions that they need um, such as data stacks in order to uh, build their generative AI solutions. So one of the things that we look at is um, we look at it from like sort of three levers, if you will. Um, it's co-build, co-market and co-sell. 
And so, you know, the co-build part is always when we talk about integrations with AWS services, as well as with the ISV solutions, that's kind of how we create, that's like the product, right? And focusing on what that product fit is for the end customer. Uh, that's sort of the co-build. And the co-market is we really think, you know, very thoughtfully uh, about the market part, right? How do we go to market together? And it's not about throwing money at this at all. That is like, that's like the, e that's like an easy way. That's like an easy way out. The real thing is you could have a ton of money and not know what the hell to do with it. So this is really, we're very focused on um, how do we want to market to our end customers together? And we do that in a very thoughtful way. And I think we've done this with data stacks, right? With AstraDB on, you know, integrated with Amazon Bedrock. And that has really made the difference uh, with our end customers. And as a result of it, we now have, you know, like end customers across different industries that are, you know, interested in figuring out how do they partner with us, um, you know, with this partnership as well as with other um, AWS partnerships. I think the other thing that we do is that we also, um, you know, look at those user experiences, making sure that it's good. But then we also have a co-sell component of it, which is where our fields come in and where we have that interlock with our field organizations to ensure that, you know, um, since they're the sort of front lines to the uh, to customers, how they're, you know, they understand the, what the solution is, what the advantages are for the end customers, and ultimately how this is going to benefit them in the long run. And, you know, what this really means to them and building their generative AI applications. And one of the things that we heard from customers is that I have a lot of data and I really need um, my applications to really be, you know, customized with their with their data and other sort of, you know, tools that they have. And so enabling data as your differentiator is one of our key components as we're sort of partnering with generative AI um, solutions with our partners. And so in doing that securely, I think is really critical. And so that's why we've developed things like agents for bedrocks to really help those customers build and those partners build applications so that it's, you know, very specific to the business, to your data, and ultimately to the end customers. So that's sort of how we've, you know, encompassed it. And then ultimately, these all get um, integrated into a strategic collaboration agreement that we, you know, similar to what we did with data stacks. Harry, I want to piggyback a little bit off of what Mona was talking about in terms of the customer focus or to use Amazon parlance customer obsession. How do you have any specific case studies or use cases of customers in terms of how how they're using data stacks in AWS to to come up with and to build with Gen AI and and come up with some cool initiatives for their organizations. Yeah, yeah. So so um, let, let me just kind of dovetail on on a couple things that that Mona mentioned. Um, you know, so much of this comes back to the developer experience, and so one of the things in our strategic collaboration agreement that we did was uh, we provided a free tier for developers to get their vector databases started, to get their operational data start, uh, um, stores started uh, uh, at no cost. Um, so, and we see hundreds of those vector databases created on a weekly basis. So, you know, we're getting the velocity in that community, as you mentioned, um, which is, is an exciting element about, about the partnership. Um, you know, and then on top of that, we have thousands of these customers that already have their applications running uh, on data stacks or on Apache Cassandra. And from a vector da data store perspective, um, it makes complete sense for them to run vector uh, in that same operational data store that's certified, proven, uh, supported in the company. And so um, these dynamics create a catalyst for us to, to, to have the, the engagements. Um, and and that's what the the partnership's all about. And you know, we will take Mona's money. We won't spend it for, um, but uh, but it, but it is a big part of it that we are both investing in this, and 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 uh, um, we're excited about it. So you know, from an example of customer deployments, um, what what's interesting right now is is we are in the early innings or early phases of Gen AI adoption. Um, the types of prototypes and applications that people are adopting. You know, are largely let me take static data, do vector, have it connect LLM through through RAG, and then provide some type of of output. So we things see things like, you know, uh, um, co-pilots, um, virtual assistants, or chatbots that are using vector and LLMs. 
um, to go to market. Uh, and, and we're excited about that. We're engaging with customers. But it really is just the tip of the spear of the potential of this. And I think in many ways, our partnership, because of the type of applications that, that Datastax is involved in, our partnership is looking at the, the, the next level of generative AI of how do I bring advanced agents into that real-time operational data store and that real-time experience. So things like hyper-personalization, um, really advanced, you know, dynamic fraud detection for, for, for banks, um, you know, real-time supply chain decision-making via vector and LLMs, um, you know, helping support desks, not just capture static data uh, via generative AI, but capture real-time data. So you have the call that somebody just put, you know, made three minutes ago that is now reincorporated back into that operational and vector data store for querying capabilities. So um, we're getting started with some easy use cases, uh, um, th a lot of things around, you know, basic search capabilities, but where the potential of this is and where we're going to engage with our joint customers is super exciting. And it's going to change, you know, everybody's way that they, they have application experiences on a daily basis going forward. Excellent. A great note to end on. Harry, Mona, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank, thank you. you. It's great being thank with you. you. Thank you, Mona. Thank you. And I'll, hope, I'll see you later. See you at reInvent. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. We'll see you at reInvent. Well, stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage <laughs> of SuperCloud 5. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in technology enterprise coverage.